Hi, and welcome to Governance Bites. I'm Mark Benicevic, and I'm here today with Tracy Cross, who was formerly a law partner in a major New Zealand law firm, and is now running her own business, including teaching governance to businesses, and sitting on a number of both profit and not-for-profit boards. Thank you for your time, Tracy. Thanks, Mark. Okay, and my first questions for you are a little bit specific. I'd like to ask, what do you expect to see as standing items on a board agenda? I think the first point, Mark, is that the agenda items should flow through from the organisation's work plan so that they're actually relevant agenda items. Um, The second thing that I'd uh, note is that directors are required to um, disclose their interests on on an interest register. So an initial item on the agenda should just be a a, a refresh of of those interests, make sure that there is nothing new to be disclosed, um, you know, sort of around the board table, and then just making sure that there's no conflicts arising from any of the information in the board papers that they need to sort of actually identify um, so that it can be managed um, accordingly. Other items on the agenda would include um, an update on financials, of course, operational matters, um, risk, um, and um, whether there's anything that the, you know, any projects going on, any, um, you know, whether the strategy needs to be sort of refreshed, or just where we are against the strategy, um, I think are all sort of items. And then an important um, um, item to note at the end is to have, for the board to have reflection time. Um, so they can actually sort of um, have time to discuss things on their own, but also to reflect on their performance um, through that meeting. And actually, it's always a good question to ask, have they provided management what they need you know, from that meeting? It's right. about board performance as well. Okay, thank you. What information then do you expect to receive before a board meeting and in what form should that take? Well, I think the key for information coming to the board for management is that it's clear and concise. Um, you know, board members don't have time to rifle through copious amounts of paper to find the information and they shouldn't need to. Um, I think management needs to be, um, you know, sort of trained in respect of the the information that's required by the board and what the board needs um, so that everyone's on the same page and meetings can be run really efficiently. Um, So I think it's about um, having really concise, impactful, clear information. Okay, thank you. And how far in advance should you receive that information? Depends on the complexity of the organisation, but I would say certainly you know, a week, two, two weeks. It's not a matter of days. I mean, the, the board needs time to read the information, and I'd suggest several times, and have the opportunity to um, identify questions um, and further information that it might need. Um, having the opportunity to take that, um, those questions to the chair and for the chair to request information from management so that it can be available prior to the meeting. Right, so you receive uh, succinct board information and then read it and ask questions of the chair. The chair mm. would then go back to management. Management would bring the answers to those questions all in time for you to digest it in advance of the board meeting. Absolutely. So I mean, it, it is a process, Mark. I mean, mm. and, and um, board members have, they have a job to do. It's not just reading information the day before, the night before the board meeting and rocking up. You know, it's a, it's a process of preparation and board members need time to do that so that we have an efficient board meeting. Right, okay, thank you. So to take a step up then, what is the role of a board of directors and what exactly is governance? Well, if we start with governance, um, uh, in the first instance, I think governance is, is a system that enables an organisation to be directed and controlled. And it's the board that's doing that. It's the board that's leading that. It's leading the purpose, leading the um, the strategy of the organisation and the goals, and working with management to actually pull that together. Um, many organisations don't have a system to pr- to provide good governance, and then that just ends up in chaos. Um, if we take the analogy of a car. Um, with the board in the driver's seat. So we've got the car, we're in the car, we're looking out the front view mirror, we can see where we're going, back view mirror, okay, that's where we've been, we don't want to spend too much time looking where we've been, it's about moving forward, and then the board has their foot on the brake or the accelerator, managing the pace of progress within the organisation, while we're considering the rules of the road and making sure that we're, we're doing everything sort of appropriate. Right, so to tie that back to what you said before, it all starts with the organisation's purpose, and then the board is responsible for setting the strategy, uh, the management team will then de- determine the work plan, and then you're delivering to that work plan within the rules of the organisation, within the, the legal system and framework that, yes. that it sits yep. in. 
Does governance differ significantly between for-profit and not-for-profit entities? I think the point about um, not-for-profit and for-profit is that they're there for different purposes. I mean, obviously, making a profit, not making a profit. But the government governance should be the same. Um, I think, you know, over time we're seeing a, um, a heightened awareness and not-for-profit of governance standards and requirements. Um, and not, for, not for profit, you have a lot of people, volunteers, giving their time. They don't necessarily come to the table with, with business sort of acumen. So it really is sort of a, um, you know, there's some training, there's some awareness that needs to be done there. Um, but, you know, the governance should be the same, right-sized, of course. And is that the same across the world as well? Is New Zealand an outlier in the way that we govern organisations or is governance essentially in principle the same across the world? I think you see the same base principles, you know, um, purpose, um, effective governance, um, you know, a, a good governance culture and holding to account. I mean, they're pretty consistent, you know, principles across the, across the world. And that concept of purpose, strategy, and then delivering to the strategy and understanding the legal framework in which you're residing and making sure that you're abiding by those rules. Absolutely. We've seen, a, you know, a, a significant focus on purpose over the last few years with, with organisations really needing to identify what their purpose is and being clear with their people as to what their purpose is. People want to work with organisations that have an aligned purpose. So it's just become so much more important. And I think it sort of dovetails them with the fact that, you know, we're all here to do more than make money. Um, so it is a really important aspect of governance. Cool. Thank you very much for your time, Tracy. Pleasure, Mark. See you next episode. Thank you.